Switch out on the market, Nintendo seems to be back on top. So it's hard to believe that they were in such deep trouble just a couple of years ago. That's right, we're talking about the Wii U, their follow-up to the Wii that destroyed the Wii name in our hearts and minds and is considered perhaps one of Nintendo's worst consoles next to the Virtual Boy. It wasn't all bad though. Despite people having nothing but scorn for the Wii U nowadays, it did have some good areas. Some of its features were so nice, it's surprising they didn't carry over to the Switch. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Correction, that's what you're here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about the clunky and useless features of the Wii U, and to say the least, there are many. Yeah, in case you didn't notice, I have a guest here today. Why not introduce yourself? Sorry, I got distracted thinking how I'm going to destroy this console's image more than it already has been. My name's PGB Gilby, I'm a Nintendo live streamer, part of a network of channels called Party Game Bros that does everything from Nintendo to PS4 to indie games to even board games. Oh, and we also do top tens. That is what I'm here for, after all. Right, so let's get started then. We got a lot of ground to cover. We'll watch and learn. Here's Mom. We already have a Wii, sweetie kids. Okay, so like, let's be honest. The Wii U gamepad is not exactly something I would call ergonomic. It isn't like the GameCube controller that still feels perfectly crafted in my hands today as it did when I was a kid. The Wii U gamepad is, for all intents and purposes, bulky and just not that comfortable to hold. Granted, once you've been playing on this thing for over an hour, presuming your gamepad hasn't died by then, the controller does kind of feel like it has almost molded to your hands. You don't really notice it's there as much when you're playing the game. However, if you go from basically any other controller and then go to this one, you immediately notice how it feels like you picked up a Fisher-Price toy, asking yourself where to put the giant Game Boy-like cartridge. Even going from my Switch to the gamepad is jarring, just because the Switch is thinner and fits better in my hands. The worst thing about this is that the Wii U was made in 2012, when companies were already making far sleeker, not to mention portable tablet-like devices that just felt better to hold. Granted, I know that Nintendo cares more about innovation than state-of-the-art hardware, but if the Wii U was supposed to be their flagship console, they could have done a better job slimming this thing down. In thinking about a new Nintendo system, we knew the prevailing thought would be this. I remember back when the Wii got Netflix. For most people, it was the first time they saw Netflix's streaming service that has since taken over the world. And since it was such a big deal on the Wii, it only made sense to bring it over to the Wii U. And it didn't stop there either. Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, Crunchyroll, and YouTube were all available on the Wii U. So what happened? Streaming services have become a standard on game consoles at this point, so why doesn't the Switch have any? Out of all the services as I listed. YouTube's the only one that carried over to the Switch. I get that Nintendo doesn't own these services or anything, but I'm sure they'd be willing to hop on board a system with such a massive install base. Plus, how awesome would it be to stream Netflix on a system like the Switch? I mean, you could be watching it on your TV, and then when you have to go somewhere, you could just pick up your Switch and continue watching it, just like you do with games. It's lower on the list, though, because it's not really that big a deal. Like I said, just about every game console, smartphone, computer, tablet, and even most TVs let you use Netflix and the others, so we aren't really losing much by not having them on the Switch. A totally mad squid. This is a squid dance. Let's talk about Nintendo TV, something I completely forgot existed until I started working on this top 5. For those that don't know, Nintendo TV was this free service you could use on the Wii U that would allow you to have all your streaming services accessible in one place and allow you to watch live scores and whatnot for sporting events all from your console. This is a cool idea and all, but I never used it and I barely heard of anyone else using it either. Why? I think it's because the Wii U had Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, etc., and the gamepad also had a TV remote function built right into the controller itself. Why would you need it all in one app when everything the app did was just a click away from the home menu of the console? Doesn't really make sense. And then, as for the live stats that Nintendo TV put out, those were cool and all, but they were all for sports stuff. I'm more of a stereotypical geek, and I don't like sports, so the whole live stat stuff was basically pointless, unless there were bonus features for Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Star Trek. There weren't, so that's that. Of course, I think Nintendo also realized the utter uselessness of this app, and they eventually removed it from the Wii U before the final console update. The game will probably still be right for all of us, 
One Wii U feature that was shown a lot of love by the community was Miiverse. In case you somehow haven't heard, Miiverse was a social network that was built into the Wii U. It let you draw and send messages to people. Every piece of software had its own community, and some games found ways to really make use of it. Games like Mario 3D World would give you stamps to customize your posts, and in both Splatoon and Super Mario Maker, the posts were practically part of the game's DNA. Nintendo did did manage to work in substitutes for Miiverse in games like Splatoon 2, and some functions like screenshots were carried over, but the service was never fully brought back. I guess it's not as necessary anymore, as Nintendo has been more willing to embrace traditional social media, but Miiverse had a certain charm to it that regular social media just can't replicate. People might point to those worst Miiverse post videos as evidence that it shouldn't come back, but in reality, that's the exact reason we need it back. This isn't your typical social media toxicity. This is absolute gold. Whoever comes in last place has to wear dad's ugly holiday sweater for a whole day. Now another fairly useless feature of the Wii U was the camera. It was really only used in a few things like Mii Maker, where it claimed you could make a Mii from a picture and it would always turn out drastically wrong, and I believe it was also used in Wii Party U. But it's been a while since I played that and I don't remember the details. No Face Raiders U, no kind of AR games tried with the Wii U, they could have 100% remove the camera on the gamepad altogether to cut down cost, and I'm sure bulkiness, but no. I think the app that best shows the camera's uselessness is Wii U Chat, the app that allows you to call your friends on their Wii U console. None of my friends had a Wii U. I'm sure that many of yours didn't either. Heck, maybe one of your friends had a Wii U and you didn't. Whatever the case may be, Wii U Chat could only be used between consoles. You think with Nintendo's recent app obsession, they could have made a Wii U app for phones, and then you could call people that have the phone app from your Wii U. But no, Nintendo decided that their best app for console experiences would be the Nintendo Switch Online app. Oh, Nintendo. Nintendo must have realized that their small user base for the Wii U resulted in basically no one calling each other on this app, so it was discontinued right around the time Miiverse was. I guess it was a good idea, but the fact that basically no one used this app because there weren't many ways to use it makes it a bad idea from Nintendo, especially because their whole idea behind adding a camera to the gamepad was basically to use this feature, and the other apps that also used the camera barely used it too. Nintendo could have cut costs by leaving it out, or have tried to make it more meaningful in its use, but that just didn't happen, which is probably why the Switch doesn't have a camera. Could it also be a perfect fit just for you? Remember Nintendo Switch Online and all of the outrage that came with it? Makes you realize that, in some ways, online was better back in the Wii U days. Now, I can't speak to how well the online worked then compared to now, as I don't normally play online. But, if Splatoon, a game built on its online multiplayer, was able to become Nintendo's next big franchise while on the Wii U, and we're still complaining about how Smash's online runs on the Switch, I'm guessing the bandwidth wasn't a huge upgrade. But how was the Wii U's online better? Well, for starters, let's compare price. Nintendo Switch Online costs $20 a year, while the Wii U's online costs $0 a year. Yeah, that's right. It was absolutely free. No convoluted service for people to be disappointed by. If you have internet, you can play online. It's a simple thing, sure, but that doesn't make it any less nice. So how do we reach the star coin? You make a staircase of boost blocks. And back to the Wii U gamepad. From the lackluster camera to the bulky design, what else can I complain about with this thing? How about the port on the bottom of the controller? Believe it or not, nothing was ever released to be used with this port. Nothing. You might be thinking, well, how about those Wii U charging cradles? The charging cradle actually uses those copper contact point thingies next to the port to charge the gamepad. So this port was actually never used at all. Nintendo advertised it for this Mii shooting game in the launch trailer for the Wii U, and their overview trailer said that Nintendo and third parties could use it to add additional features to the Wii U gamepad, because it wasn't bulky enough already. But it was never used except for showing off that gun attachment that was never even released. Yet another thing that could have been removed to cut costs and bulkiness of the gamepad. Maybe they could have had something good, but it's doubtful. The Wii U gamepad isn't as versatile as the Joy-Con. Even if they did come up with something cool, who knows if anyone would have bought it anyway. I'm just glad they didn't go with circle pads on the gamepad. Whew, that would have been bad. But I'm not just here to talk about that port. Oh no, I also need to talk about the console itself. 
I've said multiple times over the years that the Wii U just felt like the prototype for the Nintendo Switch. One of the ways this is most obvious is the off-TV play. If they were going to give the gamepad such heft, they should have just put all the important hardware into it and let us take games like Pikmin 3 with us on the go. Instead, they gave us something that we could only take like 10 feet away from the console before it stopped working. The gamepad design is so similar to the Switch, and you can tell that they were really wanting to do an idea like the Switch for quite a while, but they just weren't sure how to precisely initiate it. There were many times when I wanted to take the Wii U with me on the go, but I just couldn't because of the amount of effort it would have taken. This was a bad hardware limitation of the Wii U that was gladly fixed with Nintendo's next-gen hardware. But wait, there's more. Okay, I won't talk your ear off too much longer, but Wii U load times? It would take forever to go from an app, even system settings, to the home menu and load a game. This was even worse at launch before they patched the console in a later update. It would feel like it took many minutes before the system would even start. The console was already technologically behind, and the fact that they couldn't load the home menu almost immediately, like the Switch can? It's just sad. Speaking of the operating system, I haven't even touched on the amount of memory it used up on a console. Got an 8GB Wii U? Well, there went most of your space where you could download games. A 32GB console was a little better, but you could still only download like 4 or 5 large games onto it before you needed to get a flash drive for your console to add extra memory. Granted, the Switch technically has this problem too, but the OS takes up much less space and most developers are better at size management for games on Switch than on Wii U. But the Wii U didn't have that refinement, so memory was much more of a commodity on the system. Okay, now I'm done with my hardware rant. And the answer to that question is an emphatic, absolutely. The Nintendo Switch eShop has a wonderful selection of games. There are some pretty big titles on there, as well as a massive volume of indie games. It's not quite as much as, say, Steam, but it's still really impressive. And assuming you have an SD card, the eShop is the way to load up your Switch with games. So why does it suck so much? Granted, the Switch eShop does have some bright spots. It has a wish list, the general browsing is better than last time, and you'll have no problems finding the new releases. But that's about it. The Wii U eShop, on the other hand, while obviously having a much less impressive library, was much more well designed. Not only is it more aesthetically pleasing, but it has plenty of categories to help you find what kind of game you want. That's a huge step up from a massive list you have to constantly check or risk something interesting getting buried. That's far from the only feature the Switch eShop is missing though. The Wii U eShop also had ratings for the games, so you know what game is more likely to be worth your time. Also, Virtual Console. People are complaining that the Switch doesn't have one. Well, the Wii U had a Virtual Console for six different Nintendo systems. Even if the selection was somewhat limited, that's still a wide range. Also, the music. Sure, I doubt anything will top the Wii Shop Channel theme, but the Wii U eShop had plenty of nice tracks that played while you were shopping. Compare that to the dead silence of the Switch eShop. It's funny, you would think a store with such a good catalog would have a layout to help accentuate it. Too bad that isn't the case. I know this isn't necessarily a feature per se, but part of the downfall of the Wii U was how it was branded. Even the name. Wii U. What does that mean? Yes, I know the Reginator said during the reveal of the system that the U was supposed to symbolize bringing it back to the gamer, but did Wii U really manage to accomplish that in the first place? Part of the confusion with this system was who was it for? Nintendo made the system seem like it was supposed to be for families sometimes, like in most of their ads. And then press conferences like the 2011 E3 reveal made it seem like it was supposed to be for hardcore gamers. The advertising and branding was all over the place. Plus, even I was confused when I watched the Wii U reveal all those years ago. That first reveal trailer says it all. Play with the new controller. Draw with the new controller. This combined with the name Wii U makes all the sense why barely anyone bought it. Many people, including myself for many months, thought the Wii U was an add-on for the Wii. Seriously, I kind of thought it was like a new Nintendo 3DS kind of thing, and how it would have exclusive games like Xenoblade or Minecraft or Fire Emblem Warriors. I thought you needed the Wii U gamepad just to play some exclusive Wii games that required it. Yeah, advertising was already off to a bad start. No wonder many parents said things like, 
but you already have a Wii. They didn't know it was a new console either. Now, if Nintendo had called it Wii 2, they might have genuinely had better sales because it had a delineated and clear progression like Sony has with PlayStation. Speaking of those ads, let's talk about the cringiness of them. Hi, buddy, popcorn, that's a deal. Yeah, that was actually a line in one of the ads. It was a bunch of ads about kids trying to convince their family to buy a Wii U for togetherness. They were really cringy. The ads didn't feel that genuine and were very forced. Nintendo Switch does so much better with this. They actually have more heartwarming trailers that more subtly advertise the console, where families have integrated the Switch into their daily lives and routines instead of the really cringy Wii U ads that feel forced, where families all talk in unison wishing you a happy holiday. Really, those commercials made me feel like I'd been transported into a horror movie. The one redeeming feature of all these ads is that Joe Carey, who plays Steve from Stranger Things was in one advertising amiibo for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Wait, why do you say bye to just you? Oh, that could be a nice relation. Don't oh say my that, gosh. dude. That's not funny. Granted, that trailer itself was a really bad, cringy training montage, but despite that, it had Steve, which helped make it slightly better than it could have been otherwise. But overall, hot buttered popcorn, the Wii U's branding was awful. So today, welcome to the world of Wii U. Number one may sound like a dumb choice, but I'm sticking by it. We can talk about digital storefronts and online multiplayer all we want, but at the end of the day, the most important part of a console is its games. Now the Switch has quite the impressive library of games on it, and most of the Wii U's high profile games have made it onto the system via a port, remake, or a sequel that's basically just a straight upgrade. There is one notable exception to this though, Pikmin 3. Now, I know that Super Mario 3D World and the Wonderful 101 also didn't make it on the Switch, but here's the thing. While I've praised both of them in the past, I wouldn't lose any sleep if you told me I couldn't play either of them ever again. Pikmin 3, on the other hand, may very well be in my top 20 favorite games of all time. Possibly even in the top 10. It had entertaining characters, new mechanics that really accentuated Pikmin's strategy gameplay, and gorgeous creative visuals that really pushed the Wii U to its limit. Hell, it was one of the few first party titles where the gamepad actually felt useful instead of just feeling like a gimmick. Now, you might be saying Pikmin 3 isn't a feature. It's a game. To that I say, can my Switch play Pikmin 3? I don't think so. Okay, okay, if you want a traditional feature, there's always backwards compatibility, which has been rendered kind of pointless anyway due to the aforementioned re-releases. Again, aside from Pikmin 3. Speaking of Pikmin 3, I'm doing a stream of Pikmin 3 tonight on my own channel. Both the main channel and my own channel for Party Game Bros are in the description below. Also, Gilby mentioned Steve in his last entry. Steve's a character in Stranger Things, which is a horror show on Netflix. Horror is often associated with Halloween, and I have a Halloween video coming up. Yes, that was definitely an organic transition to start plugging my content. Oh, and we should also mention that this isn't the first collab we've done before. We've also done two podcasts on Smash DLC and on Google Stadia, both on the main Party Game Bros channel. But that's beside the point. Do you agree with our top five parts of it, or do you think it's completely wrong? Let us know in the comments below. I am Defawfulizer, and I'll see you on Halloween. Be sure to buckle your pants. Crap, I just realized if you didn't see a couple videos ago, you probably didn't get the joke and just got a bunch of messages that I'm really not meaning to send right now. Just, for, just forget you saw this part of the video. Uh, bye!